You are listening to Charting Wealth's weekly review and forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 15th of August, 2016. Here's how we do it. We will go over the weekly charts for all four of the ETFs we follow. Three indexes, that is the total market, IYY, SPY, which is a Standard & Poor 500, QQQ, which are the tech stocks, the NASDAQ 100, and gold. We'll also look at what happened throughout the week as far as the daily chart goes, and we're going to talk about the things that moved the market last week and what may be moving the market in the coming week, up or down. Now, let's jump right in to begin with. We always start with IYY. Like I said, that is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Total Market Index Fund. It tracks the entire market. It's an exchange-traded fund. We continue to see on our weekly chart that we have six weeks of upward movement. We had a crossover going up on the week of July the 1st. That was actually a down week, but we saw the MACD cross over the signal line. That's a moving average convergence divergence. And we saw there starting on the 8th, a green candle up movement. That's the 8th of July, and it has been green candles ever since then. We are in a confirmed up move. Those of you who have your daily worksheets, please go ahead and mark an up arrow for the weekly chart on IYY. Why does that matter? Why do we only look at it once a week? Well, you know what? You can look at indicators all day long and confuse yourself. What we try to do is to keep it as simple as possible. The, the principle that we like to look at is Occam's razor. You make things as simple as possible, but no simpler because you can confuse yourself with too many variables and indicators. So we want to know what's going on weekly, and we do that once a week with our weekly review and forecast, and we mark it down so that we're able to track that throughout the week. Why does the weekly chart matter? Because all things being equal, the market tends to move in the direction of the largest chart of the biggest wave. And the biggest wave we look at is the weekly. So weekly chart, we see another week of upward movement in the market. Derivative oscillator continued to gain energy. MACD and the signal line are staying apart and moving up. Now, if we look at the daily chart on the total market, what do we see? We see a lot of sideways sliding. We see that the market started on Monday the 8th. And it really hit the high for the week that Monday. The high that it hit on Monday was 109.30. And did it go any higher? Actually, the high on Friday, 109.31. So the market tended to move sideways throughout that week. We are in on the daily chart, a confirmed down move. We do see the derivative oscillator has switched over moving up, but the market was sliding sideways for the whole week, still above our two-day trend line. Now let's go back to the weekly chart, and we're going to check out SPY. What is that? Again, the Standard & Poor 500. It, too, is a confirmed up move, crossed over going up right about the same time the total market did, the 8th. That is where we confirmed it, and since that date, we've seen it move up for the prior, well, the six weeks since the 8th of July. It was another up week ending the 12th of August. If we look at the daily chart, it looks somewhat similar to what we saw at the total market. Again, market moved sideways pretty much most of the week still above the two-day trend line. The daily chart is still in a confirmed down move, although that is via the MACD had crossed over the signal line back on the 28th of July. But we see the derivative oscillator started moving up back on the 9th. So there may be a switchover coming up soon. Again, remember, this is an election year. What does the market tend to do? It tends to move up in election years, presidential election years. If you don't have the Stock Traders Almanac for 2016, it's not too late. There's still a few months left, and you need it every year. And the first thing you should do when you get yours in the mail from Amazon, turn to, I believe it's page 72, but look it up in the index, presidential election cycles. Those are so important because what happens in 2017-18 might shock you. I'll leave that for you to read. Stock Traders Almanac 2016. Get it today. So we, we don't have any deal with uh, the Hirsches, but they are great people. I love their work. They've been doing it since the 70s, at least Yale, the father. Now we do see, this is interesting, that we are above the Bollinger Band all week long. How crazy, as the market 
has shrunk as far as volatility goes. We have Bollinger Bands on our chart, and they bottlenecked. It looks like a Coke bottle almost over the last many days, where the Bollinger Bands have swung in tight, and we're outside the breathing space. I heard somebody describe one time when you're outside the Bollinger Bands, it's like being in outer space with no air to breathe. At some point, the market does move back into that, so continue to watch. Okay, now we're going to go back to our weekly chart, and we're going to check out the Qs. Oh, and for the record, the total market and the S&P 500 were both down 0.09% for the day on Friday. Now, let's go to the Qs and see what's going on. The Qs has been moving up for the last four weeks above the Bollinger Band. How interesting. It crossed over again on the 8th, same time that the derivative oscillator did, and the same time that the candles turned positive. Actually happened a week later on the other charts that we looked at. But the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, shot up starting on the 8th and has continued to move up, up, up. Since then, we have six candles of strong up movement. And like I said, the last four above the Bollinger Bands on those weeklies. So again, mark your cues down as up on the weekly as were all three of our indexes. Let's look at what went on during the week on the cues. And we see that starting the 8th, there was up movement as there was on the 9th, Tuesday. Then we saw some down movement on Wednesday, up movement on Thursday, some down movement on Friday. Technically, the Qs was up 0.07%. Of course, we use Heiken Ashi, average pace in Japanese type candlesticks. We find them to be more accurate, more helpful for us in being able to really find trends. We also saw the MACD crossover going down on Friday on that daily chart. So what do we see going on with the Qs? Again, still above the two-day trend line. Again, it's flattening out too and tracking sideways. Again, it was more of an up week than the other two indexes. But again, is this market topping out? Could be, but we're going to let the charts confirm that for us. We're not going to guess that. We're going to be ready to move though. We're going to be agile like a lynx, okay? All right, now let's go back to our weekly chart. And lastly, before we get to the news, we're going to go to gold, which was down 0.21% for the day on Friday. Gold looks like it's about, well, actually at the end of the week, it did technically cross over. Now, when the charts cross over as slightly as they did going down on gold, you have to be careful before you call that. If there was a huge bump up in the price of gold on Monday, it would look like it never crossed over. It would be a bounce off. So, We'll continue to watch that, but we do see that the week ending the 12th was a doji. In other words, the market opened and closed on our Heiken Ashi type candlestick about where it started. So it opened and closed at about the same price, although there was more up movement than down. We have a larger wick on top than a wick on the bottom. And again, gold has been sliding sideways since Gosh, the 15th. Actually, the last big up move in gold was the week ending the 8th of July. And then we had a spinning top on the 15th of July. The week ending then had downward movement the week of the 22nd. Another doji, a green doji on the week ending the 29th of July. Good up movement on the week ending the 5th of August. And then down movement over the course of the past week. If we take a look at the daily chart, we see that gold has basically slidden sideways. A lot of down movement on Friday of the prior week, the 5th of August. A lot of down movement on Monday, again, the 8th, but then it slid sideways the rest of the week. Gold is in a confirmed down move on the daily chart. So continue to be aware of that. You can go ahead and mark your charts confirmed down on gold, but pay attention to it. Check out the weekly chart on Monday and make sure that gold continues to in that confirmed down move on the weekly because if there is a big bounce up in the price of gold, it won't be. So you don't want to have it wrong. 
that is where we ended up on our charts. Now we're going to switch over to the thing we do only once a week, and that is talk about things that move the market as far as news and then what might move the market over the next week. Well, we saw that U.S. retail sales were unchanged in July. Now, this is a worrisome sign, particularly when you start looking at the economy and you realize that our economy is held aloft solely based on consumer consumption. Isn't that frightening? Isn't that really, really scary? So a yeah, half percent drop or so in the producer price index reinforces the notion that even though they claim there is a, a great labor market, the U.S. Federal Reserve is going to stay on the sidelines as far as monetary action for some time to come. So as far as increasing that interest, those interest rates, Probably not going to happen anytime soon. U.S. retailers with that dreadful first quarter of earnings that popped about, we've seen our major retailers end up posting better than expected earnings, uh, particularly over the last week. And what did that do? Well, that helped the price of at least those shares of stocks in that sector. We also saw throughout the course of the week uh, the Bank of New Zealand, they, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, they actually, again, cut their official cash rate by about 25 basis points. We also saw the Bank of England attempt to relaunch their quantitative easing. They ran into a snag on the first, uh, the second day, actually, of trying to do that. Then things looked up a little more on Wednesday. They had much better luck, but again, tough going for the Bank of England as they try to pump more money backed by absolutely nothing but their good faith and credit into the marketplace. Remember when money used to be backed by gold or silver or something? Now they just print it by the bucket loads. Sort of reminds you of Weimar Germany. At some point, those chickens will come home to roost. Hopefully, not anytime soon. But again, my friends, it's the reason you learn to read the stock charts. Because when it starts, you want to know when to get out and I, again, I encourage you, please go to the website and check out our inverse ETFs, how to make money when markets crash and burn. You need to understand what's going on. And when you can read a stock chart, you can survive in any market. But it's so important. That's why you got to practice with us every day. 10 minutes is all we ask. 10 minutes a day. The most valuable 10 minutes you're going to spend for your financial future. 10 minutes. That's all we ask. Okay, let's talk about the EU. What did they do? Well, they cited exceptional circumstances and they waived the fines for Italy, I'm sorry, for Spain and Portugal after the two countries did what? Well, they exceeded their budget deficit caps. France had received a similar waiver last year. What does that really make you think about the EU's credibility on budget matters. Not much, not much at all. They're running scared and they have good reason to be because when the market goes bad, they are going to suck wind terribly. It's going to be a bloodbath over there. So what's going on in our markets with all this great news? They're soaring. All three major U.S. equity indices. Guess how they closed? They closed higher. That's the first time that we've seen that happen since 1999. How is that? Who knows? Oh, wait a minute. Could it be all the free money that's pumped out there backed by nothing? Probably so. Why does the stock market keep going up when we have all this bad news? Well, it's because we keep pumping money out. Now, again, think about this. If you have an economy and say you have a million dollars in circulation and you decide as the central bank to make it two million dollars in circulation, what happens to the value of a house, all things being equal? Wouldn't it double in value because you made the money worth half as much? Yes. So when the stock market continues to soar for no good reason, could it be, I don't know, inflation of the money supply? Maybe, maybe. Again, please learn to read these charts. I'm telling you, I don't know all the answers. I just know that when the market goes up, I want to make money. When the market goes down, I want to either get out 
or I want to buy an inverse fund and make money when it goes down. But I don't want to lose my nest egg. I don't want to get screwed again, is what so many of you are telling yourself. Who wrote it down in 2008? Who wrote it down after the dot-com bubble? Who wrote it down how many different times? Get yourself ready. Get yourself prepared. Be liquid and be ready to pull out when it crashes and burns. Please, my friends, the way you do this is you learn to read these stock charts and you make your own decisions. We're an education firm. We are not a stock calling service. We want you to educate yourself. Listen to us. Read other books, other websites. Follow the Stock Traders Almanac 2016. And then 17, 18, 19, they come out every year. It is my go-to guide. It is my almanac, as it says, for the stock market. Now, lastly, let's talk about what's happening in the next week. We're going to see on Monday, Japan's going to report its industrial production data. We're going to see on Wednesday, the U.S. Federal Reserve Open Market Committee is going to release its minutes. Now, again, remember that Wednesday, the 17th of August, the minutes are going to come out from the last Federal Reserve Open Market Committee meeting. So get ready, pay attention. If it's super good or super bad, you'll see the market move in one direction or another, or another potentially. Then later in the week on Thursday, we're going to see the European Central Bank's monetary policy meetings is going to be released. And you're going to see also that same day, the 18th of August, Thursday, the UK retail sales data. And then finally on Friday, Canada is going to release its retail sales figures. So again, biggest potential market moving thing is always our own Federal Reserve. And those minutes coming out on Wednesday, if there's surprises there, or even if the market just wants to have a good reason to blow off steam or build up steam, pay attention. Whenever you hear the Fed, something about the Fed in the news for the coming week, pay attention that day. Folks, that is where we wrapped everything up for our weekly review and forecast. Again, we do this once a week so you can set your charts to know which direction all four of the ETFs, the exchange traded funds that we track, total market, S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and gold are on the big weekly chart. Then follow us every day for the daily review. How do you get all this information? If you just came across it on the web, go to chartingwealth.com, put in your email address, your first name. We'll send you our newsletter every day, which includes all these recordings, a 10-minute daily podcast, plus the weekly review and forecast. Also, you'll find at our website all of the great training videos. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're everywhere to try to be there for you. Also, if you want to really help us out, you guys have made us as high as like number six or seven in the world on iTunes podcasting for Stock Market. Thank you so much for that. If you really care about us, please go there and subscribe. You help us a lot in the metrics. Give us a five-star rating. Lastly, our plea for YouTube. We're getting closer every day to the magic 1,000 subscribers. We know we get thousands that listen every week, but when we hit that 1,000 mark, all those subscribers are going to be able to get our proprietary broadcast. That's a good reason for you to be in the first thousand. Please help us out there at YouTube. Thank you so much. We love to hear from you. Chartingwealth.com is the website. You can email us right from there. Let us know what you need, questions, concerns, problems you have. We so appreciate you. Hope you appreciate us. A little payback would be most appreciated with just those couple of things we ask for. God bless you. Hope you have a great week trading. Can't wait to put out our next broadcast for you. God bless. Take care from chartingwealth.com.